In this lesson, we'll look at a Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium problem involving the genetic condition phenylketonuria. The question reads about one child in 2500 is born with phenylketonuria, which is an inability to metabolize the amino acid phenylalanine. This is known to be a recessive autosomal trait. Autosomal meaning that the gene is found in the chromosomes that are not sex chromosomes, so 1 through 22. If the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for this trait, what is the frequency of phenylcotonuria allele? So you only get the condition if your genotype consists of two alleles that are both recessive. In other words, you would have to have inherited this defected allele from both parents in order to have this trait. Now in the question, they're telling us that one in 2500 possess this trait. So if we call this gene R for dominant and little r for recessive, one out of 2500 are little r and little r. Remember, you have to have both of the recessive genes in order to have this trait. They're asking us what is the frequency of little r in the entire gene pool, given that it's one in 2500 that have it. The way we will go about doing this is by using the Hardy-Weinberg formula, which looks like this. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared is equal to 1. P represents dominant, whereas Q represents recessive. P squared is for the genotype capital R, capital R. And Q squared is for the genotype little r, little r. And the middle is for heterozygous, where you have a mix. We're not interested in that. So I'll take this one over 2,500 and make it equal to Q squared. By solving this equation, we'll have a number that represents Q. And from that, we can find out the frequency of the recessive allele R. To solve for Q, we will square root both sides of the equation, leaving us with Q is equal to the square root of 1 over 2,500 makes... 0 0.02. 0 0.02 is the allele frequency of the recessive allele. In other words, 2% of all alleles within the gene pool are recessive. In question B, what proportion of the population are carriers of the phenylcatonuria allele? Now, you're a carrier of this allele if you are heterozygous. So you have a healthy gene inherited from one parent and a non-healthy gene inherited from the other. Now, if you have one good gene, then it will mask the condition. So this time they want the proportion of the population that are carriers only. And for that, we look to the second term in the Hardy-Weinberg equation being 2PQ. In order for us to calculate the proportion of the population that are heterozygous, we need to know what P and Q are. We already know what Q is. We solved for it in the previous part, question A. So I'll write down 2P and Q is 0 0.02. To find out P, you will use the formula P plus Q is equal to 1. This formula tells you the allele frequency in the entire gene pool. By substituting 0 0.02 in for Q, and solving for P will have the allele frequency of the dominant allele, the healthy one. 1 minus 0 0.02 is 0 0.98. We'll take 0 0.98 and substitute it into the formula right there. So I have 2 times 0 0.98 times 0 0.02, and this will give us the proportion of the population that are carriers. Using our calculator, we'll take 2 times 0 0.98 times 0 0.02, and we end up with a number of 0 0.0392. Let me write that down, 0 0.0392. If you make this into a fraction, uh, my calculator does that already, you end up with 49 over 1,250. Let's interpret that. 49 over 1,250. So out of 1,250 people, 49 would have it. To interpret this number a little bit better, 
Remember the initial population that we started with was 2,500. So multiplying the denominator by two and the top number by two, we should end up with 2,500 as the entire population. 49 times two is 98. So this fraction gives us a better representation relative to what we were given at the beginning, where one in 2,500 actually have it, and 98 out of 2,500 are carriers only. If you would want this as a percentage, this number, all you would do is multiply by 100%, and you would find out that 3.92% of the population are carriers as well. And so there you have it. Now you know how to use the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to solve problems like these.